Our learning goal for today is to be able to solve one-step equations by division or multiplication. In our first case, we have 2x is equal to 10. Therefore, we'll divide both sides by that coefficient of 2. The 2's will cancel, leaving us with x equals 5. In our next case, since we're dividing by 2, we will multiply by that divisor, both sides, which is we're going to multiply the left side by 2 and the right side by 2. 2 is the same thing as 2 over 1. We could cancel just like when we were multiplying fractions. 2 goes into 2 one time. 1 times x is 1x. 1 times 1 is 1. So we have 1x over 1 is equal to 10. The 1's cancel, and we're left with x equals 10. Fortunately, we don't have to do all this work. All you actually have to do when we're dividing by a coefficient is just multiply both sides by 2. The 2's will cancel just like so, and we get x equals 10. By the end of this lesson, I'll be able to solve equations by multiplying and dividing. Our essential question is, how are expressions different from equations? Two equations are equivalent if they have exactly the same value, the same solution. When solving an equation, we repeatedly find simpler equivalent equations by performing operations on both sides. In our previous lesson, we were adding the same number or subtracting the same number. In this lesson, we're going to be multiplying the same number to both sides or dividing both sides by the same number. Combining like terms, distributing, interchanging both sides of the equation, the symmetric property, and factoring. The division property of equality states that dividing each side of an equation by the same non-zero number produces an equivalent equation. Multiplication. Use the opposite operation in order to isolate the variable. Remember, 4x means 4 times x. Negative 16y means negative 16 times y. When we take a look at this particular problem, a dozen balloons cost $3.50. How much is each balloon? We want to write an equation and solve, round to the nearest hundreds. When solving the equation, the first thing we want to do is identify the unknown variable. In this particular case, we can see it says, how much is each balloon? I'll say, let C equal the cost of each balloon. I chose to use C because it said how much, and that's the cost. Since I know a dozen is 12, I know I'm going to have 12 times the cost of each balloon is going to give me the total cost. To solve this now, all I have to do is divide both sides by the coefficient of 12. The 12s will cancel, leaving me with C. And now I just have to divide $3.50 by 12. I'm going to use my decimal calculator. And you see it's equal to 0 0.291 and then just repeats the 6. Since we're dealing with currency, we're going to round to the nearest penny, which is 9. We use the phrase 5 or more, raise the score, 4 or less, let it rest. Since the 1 is 4 or less, we're going to leave it as 29. Also, since we're dealing with currency, we have to make sure we label it correctly. And we say, oh, it's 29 cents. In this case, I have 2 times x. To undo that multiplication of 2, we'll divide both sides by 2. The 2's will cancel, leaving with x. 8 divided by 2 is 4. The same process will be used in the next one. We're going to divide both sides by 3. The 3's will cancel, leaving me with x. And 9 divided by 3 is 3. We'll divide both sides by 1.5, or 1 and 5 tenths. The 1.5's will cancel, leaving us with x. 4.5 divided by 1.5 is 3. If the decimals kind of threw you off, you could move the decimals to the right one place and here to the right one place, leaving us with 45 over 15. 45 divided by 15 is 3. But the great thing is, a lot of times your teacher is going to let you use a calculator for this. 4.5 divided by 1.5 is 3. Let's take a look at the multiplication property of equality, which states that multiplying each side of an equation by the same non-zero number produces an equivalent equation. Priscilla found a buried treasure containing 20 gold bars. If each gold bar weighs 12.4 kilograms, what is the total weight of the treasure? Write the equation to solve. So again, we're going to define the variables, stating let w equal the total weight of the treasure. Therefore, if we have the weight of the treasure and we divide by the number of gold bars, this will give me the weight of each bar. We could also say 
the total weight of the treasure divided by the weight of each gold bar will give me the total number of bars. We can also state that the total weight of the treasure divided by the weight of each gold bar will give us the total number of bars. I'm going to use the first one, but if you prefer the latter one, you could always use the second one. In this case, since my divisor is 20, I'm going to multiply both sides by the divisor of 20. The 20s will cancel. This will give me W is equal to, and I'll just use my calculator, and that's 248. Since we're dealing with a word problem, we have to label. W is the weight of the treasure. We were working with kilograms, so our answer is 248 kilograms. Let's take a look at this example. X over 4 is equal to 6. We'll multiply both sides by the divisor, meaning the denominator of 4. The 4s will cancel, leaving us with X is equal to 24. We'll use the same process for the next one. We'll multiply by the denominator of 3, which is our divisor. The 3s will cancel, leaving us with x is equal to 21. If you have negative x is equal to 7, we have an understood negative 1 as our coefficient. We'll divide both sides by negative 1. The negative will cancel, leaving us with x is equal to negative 7. If we have negative x is equal to negative 6, we'll divide both sides by that coefficient of negative 1. The negative will cancel, leaving us with x is equal to 6. I hope you enjoyed your lesson, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.